My first words in the morning to you, my friends. Hello, hello, good morning, GM. Welcome back. Artist Journal, June 6, 2023, broadcasting from Inner Space in Berlin, Germany. My name is Adrian Pocabelli. Sometimes it feels like everything is hanging by a thread, but we are here, we have arrived, and we have a heartwarming, heartwarming piece here, a collaboration by Manadal, who, of course, we know from the wonderful and heartwarming Cat Tarot, and a collaboration with Not A Number, who I believe is NAN on Twitter. So how cool is that? I had no idea. And so you think this is the work, uh, as, as I did. I thought, wow, this is a really beautiful interior. I've seen Manadal work on this for, you know, a few weeks now. And then I did this. And then I realized I could move the cat around. And so that is pretty cool. So you can move the cat around the apartment. I think we could call this interactive art. And the bathtub fills up. The sink fills up and then it drains. <laughs> so just really cool and really fun. I think we can sit on the chair here on the table. So just really fun and really cool. I think this is for the 200 Tezos event. Uh, let me just see. And I'm just curious, right? And you can sit on the couch. You can go outside. You can go for a walk. It's just like a real cat inside. So very cool and very fun and really just, uh, you know, not all art needs to be heavy. We were talking about this yesterday with, uh, with what we started with, with Elby's work, the creation of Adam, this, you know, super intense piece. And sometimes, you know, art can be really chill, just like this cat who is now sleeping here. So just a super cool work. And again, lightheartedness has its place too, right? So here it is, Sweet Home Meow, Not A Numbers Hotel, artwork by Manadal, code by Not A Number. And have these gone for sale yet? Manadal's always a little tricky, uh, always likes to wait a little bit. And there it has been an offer. As you can see, it loads up here. So it's like a game, you know, Again, we're almost back to this. It's like a hybrid of a video game. Like these are the first intimations of a hybrid between a video game and an art piece. I mean, I think some people in the video game community would argue, as I've heard before, I've heard people argue this like maybe 10 years ago to me that video games are art. And that's a whole other debate. But here, I guess we could say it's, a very clear, you know, here is like what we might consider a traditional art piece. And it is being, uh, you know, it is being kind of gamified for lack of a better term. Uh, we can interact with it as we would, you know, this reminds me of like King's Quest when I was a kid or, you know, pick your Sierra game where the person or like the Sims, right? It's almost like the Sims uh, meets art. So very interesting, something to think about and just kind of cool. So awesome work by Manadal and not a number, not for sale yet. I am thrilled to announce uh, Sabato is going to be on the spaces tomorrow. So that should be super fun. Sabato is always super interesting and super just kind of really well uh, learned on so many things. Uh, he knows a lot of the theory. He's experimented with a lot of different series, a real artist of, you know, uh, that I've always been excited about uh, since I started, since I arrived on the Tezos object, you know, ecosystem. So I am absolutely thrilled to have Sabato as the special guest here on Glitch, you know, Retro Tools, AI, and everything else. So check that out. That is tomorrow, and I will pin that to my profile right now. So check that out. I'm very excited about that. And also, thank you for the comments here on yesterday's show. Uh, thank you for the, for the sweet observations, Lepro Chant. You're welcome. 
And shout out to Retro Manny and Human Boy Vibes. 200 Tezos event has had so many amazing works. I put out a few myself, and if you have a work, I think you should as well. Always love the Tezos community events. Great episode as always. Thank you. And yeah, we're going to check out a Human Boy work uh, on this show, Happily and Stip and Pixel. I am always delighted with your words. Thank you for the support and capturing the subtlety in each piece. And also Rosatio, whose work we are discussing here. Uh, thank you for the kind words, Pokebelly. Yes, I understand. I, I don't take your words as criticism, but if I do, it's good criticism. And I always love something that makes me question my own artwork. So I love the spirit, love the positivity, and love just everything about that. And also Photoshop generative art is exciting, right? They're just getting started. Imagine what they can do in five to 10 years. Well, exactly. I mean, imagine like you can almost say five to 10 weeks, five to 10 months. What is five years going to do? Like it almost feels like the hidden logic of this whole situation is I'm going to be able to upload my portfolio in like my guess, the way this is going is I would be able to upload a series in five to 10 years and I'll just be able to make new ones by hitting a button and hit new new works in that series where it'll figure out everything I'm doing and it'll be able to just remake that. I mean, at the rate we're going, uh, it almost feels that way. Maybe that's a bridge too far. Let's see, first in the morning. So shout out to everybody, Cruel, Coppinger, Santiago, and everybody, thank you for the comments and everything. Thank you all for the likes as well. Uh, not bad, I mean, 283 views, this is great. Uh, Ed Leon Klinger. So, of course, the big news yesterday was the Apple Vision Pro, whose name I quite like, I have to say. I mean, obviously, they've been thinking about this probably for years, uh, the name. I, I love the name. Did Apple just low-key launch a V1 brain-machine interface into the Vision Pro? So there were, of course, a ton of tweets, but I thought I would highlight just a couple here that maybe relate more to us directly as artists or people concerned with the arts and visual arts. One of their ex-designers just tweeted this, quote, one of the coolest results involved predicting a user was going to click on something before they actually did. That was a ton of work and something I'm proud of. And this is how they did it. Your pupil reacts before you click in part because you expect something will happen after you click. So you can create biofeedback with a user's brain by monitoring their eye behavior and redesigning the UI, the user interface in real time to create more of this anticipatory pupil response. It's a crude brain computer interface via the eyes, but very cool. So there was a ton to look at here. And of course, here is the, the object, which you've seen all over Twitter here. Uh, so it's a crude brain computer interface via the eyes. I mean, it sounds right. And I guess the implications of all this are just, you know, I, I don't know how much is new, but I mean, I think it's pretty interesting to hear the mechanics of how they're doing this, this kind of biofeedback, so to speak. Uh, so very interesting here. And also on the Vision Pro, and just like that, this is Brandon Plants, and just like that, people are going to want to have NFTs, digital art, on the walls of their virtual offices. That is another very, very interesting point. Because if this is a window on the future here, then, you know, one would assume that this interface will eventually turn into contact lenses in five to ten years, and that really... The, that's how we're going to show digital art on the wall is going to be through some sort of vision device. So, you know, and again, one of the big takeaways here of the event that Apple was saying, which I didn't watch, but I looked at a lot of the commentary like many of us, uh, like many of you uh, watching here, probably the biggest kind of philosophical uh, UI takeaway, design philosophy takeaway, was this idea of that Apple was trying to remove the edge of the screen. In a sense, turn the world into a screen, turn our visual field into a screen. So this seems to be a step in that direction. And should that be possible, 
which it seems like it already is in a very crude form here, we might say, or as advanced as it is, then our whole display issue disappears, right? This whole showing how do we show digital art on TVs, uh, this may be a big clue as to where this is going. So just very, very interesting. And here we go, and here, uh, so this is where we are right now, and look at how cool this is. This is SCORE, Bright Moments Gallery Tokyo, and you can see the work on display. It still looks fabulous on the screens here. And look at just how there is a nice kind of uh, quality to this whole experience. Like, you might not see it, but this is a little bit, look at the kid. <laughs> look at the kid who's excited. And I assume they're pointing at the artwork and not at something out the window. But, uh, you know, look at the excitement here. And maybe it is out the window, but all to say, this has a little more energy than your average art show, I would argue. Uh, it, who knows? It depends. If you, go, I don't know if you've ever, I remember going to a Chuck Close exhibition in New York, one of the few times I visited there. And he was there. And there is an excitement in the air when, uh, you know, famous artists show up. Julian Schnabel shows up now and then in uh, Berlin. And when he shows up at the gallery, there is, uh, you know, the, the allure, the magic of fame kind of is there. And it does kind of create a certain intensity. It is anthropological. It is hard to say if the kid is pointing at the art or not. But if that kid is pointing at the art... Uh, to me, that's one of the bullish signs you can say. It does kind of look like maybe they're pointing at the art. Anyway, so very cool from SCORE, also known as Saiko. And of course, we see the work right there by SCORE. Let me just, uh, and look at this. So just very cool. This is in Tokyo. So our international art scene here. And maybe this is SCORE talking here. So... Nice documentation, I might add here. Uh, very nice documentation score. A lesson for us all. Uh, very nice. And let's just see, finally, so interesting. Art blocks, ledger. So interesting, interesting. This is pretty cool, too. So congratulations to all over there. A uh, really great comment from Dan Control uh, that I found. Uh, this, uh, you know... Dan Control is the real deal, is what I think to myself when I see this. I don't care if I don't sell much on ETH or if I don't sell that much on Tezos. Always ready to upload new stuff every time. I love that spirit. I'm uploading whether this sells or not. In a sense, that's the spirit of this show. Like I've been so appreciative that people watched. But when I started, and I assume, I mean, every day is kind of like, you know, you assume you're going to show up. But, you know, one of the beautiful things, as I like to tell people about this show, is nobody can stop me. I can always keep showing up here, even if nobody watches, which is kind of fun and interesting. Obviously, it's a heck of a lot funner having people watch, but I love this spirit. And as an artist, uh, I just think this is such a healthy attitude. Uh, and finally, LB, should we burn our 200 Tezos at the end of the event or is, is it okay to let it stay available? And so that is interesting too. And someone was saying, going to burn all mine tonight, save the one of ones, which I'll probably relist for three Tezos. <laughs> Yet the one of ones, yes, the one of ones should stay alive. So very cool. And yeah, just kind of fun. So that I think that whole 200 Tezos event has been a spectacular success. I think I saw a tweet from object i think something like 1100 artists participated so yeah maybe i can draw something up here for it uh very fun living room 005 so john has an auction a one of one it's only 50 tezos here and an interesting uh interesting kind of work here we have the light source and the shadow i guess there is more light coming than from here I think. I mean, interesting shadows, right? Because the shadows of the milk crates are going on the wall. So there must be a light source kind of from behind where the viewer is. And this interesting basketball that is kind of half in the floor. So a bit of a surrealist piece here. 
uh, as, as well as with the wires going down, kind of feels like moving day. I need to move soon, by the way, so I am running like crazy in the background here. Living room 005 at auction for 50 Tezos. And that, I think, let's see how much time is left on that. So 12 hours to go. There's already five bids here. So pretty cheap for a John one of one so far. Here's Rakano, who's been working with these 3D objects here for a month or two. And here are just a couple of works here that stood out to me. Donkey, donkey show, shot. And here, I just like the combination of the retro video game with the palm tree. I'm always, I'm a huge fan of palm trees here. And, and this is another thing I actually quite liked about this was the game is playing on the TV. So that is a pretty cool, impressive effect, how that is done. So obviously some sort of 3D software is being used here. And here's another one, again, playing with this chaos thing. Again, kind of reminiscent of Spiegel's Maskeen in a little bit here. Uh, and here's a PlayStation, Dual Shock, interesting title. So just kind of cool taking things apart here and kind of just chaotically showing them, kind of makes a nice effect here. And 640 by 480, edition of five, already on secondary for 45, sold for five Tezos on primary, Capin bought a couple. So these are doing really well. Did I bring up Rakano's page? I did. So here is also some work by Rakano. So you can see Rakano has been playing with this kind of chaotic objects uh, with 3D rendering. And so this has been going on for a couple of months here. Some cool retro computers here. A is for Apple and some nice dithering here. So that is cool. By now, they're selling really well. Look at that. We had that computer almost exactly. That looks like the Apple IIe. Uh, shout out to mom. Hey, mom. And I hope you're enjoying your gardening with my dad there. Uh, so shout out to both of you. Uh, Notan Mariana, who I've never seen before, made this work, and I believe with kid picks. So I have to say this program is totally awesome. It just creates, you know, beautiful textures here. And so this is called Make Peace With Yourself, created in kid picks app. And it says here, digital collages are a way to explore with intuitive software and look for a more figurative side to the abstract art practice. It also allowed me to write short corny poetry, so which is here. And so that is Notan Mari Mariana and five have sold. So this is also for the 200 Tezos event. And did we bring up, so what's interesting about this too is this looks like, like Notan Mariana is a 2D and 3D artist, baby cyborg, and also an architect. So a bit of a leap here, maybe trying out new software here, but really just liking the look and feel of this. There's something just kind of fun about it. Uh, you know, again, makes me want to use kid pics, which Hasdrubal Waffle absolutely loves. He can't, he can't sing the praises of that software enough uh, when we talk to him on that spaces about six weeks ago or so. Tom Battle with a beautiful sunset work here, pink clouds. And so continuing just very interesting light in this one, there is the sunset, but there's also the red coming from the subway here. So just kind of a nice piece by Tom Battle. And that is for nine Tezos. There's one left on primary edition of 13. And also a new one by Kristen Roos. So this is part of that Vorticity series that we saw uh, yesterday. And so sometimes he'll combine a lot of the works together. And I think that's what's going on here. So this is called Vortis City, uh, two words here. And this is an edition of 50. And maybe this will be for uh, the 200 Tezos event. I'm not sure. So cool work here as usual by Kristen Roos, who also collaborates with Spogels Meskinen recently on that music video, which was very cool. Uh, I think that was in Wire magazine, which is a pretty cool magazine, which I haven't seen for a while, but I think it's pretty prominent. Cream Safa, Misfits. So cool animated abstract work in black and white by Kareem Safa. So just two squares kind of in bouncing in a kind of bounding box of sorts and just kind of bouncing away here, kind of in 3D, uh, 250 by 250, upscaled by four, 
90 frames, two colors, 2023. So a one bit animation. Buy now for only five uh, Tezos, 45 cents. So this was also for the 200 Tezos event. So everybody participating here. Santiago, uh, Feet Machine comes up with name for the clouds and errors. So more interesting work. So more interesting titles. Art made using GIMP and P5JS. And so an interesting combination of experimentation here. So, and using some of this uh, software that I think Santiago is making. So pretty interesting kind of combination here, just interesting experimentation. And there are 16 left on primary for three Tezos, so pretty reasonably priced. It's part of the Secret Art series. And yes, they're starting to go, and this was just minted last night. And Bite by Bit also working with Kid Picks here. So this is interesting as well. And we've seen Bite by Bit for the last, I don't know, month or so starting to experiment with Kid Picks. So Kid Picks is in the air. And we saw Mario paint there with LB. So just very interesting and very promising. Uh, you know, you can't do everything, but at some point I would love to break out the Kid Picks which seems very promising. So this is for the 200 Tezos event, addition of 100 for two Tezos each, and there are 98 left. So again, if people start burning them, these could turn into low editions. So don't let the high edition throw you off. Mick Renders with a funny, funny uh, 200 Tezos work, addition of one of Jeff Bezos, and this looks like Microsoft Paint, and basically some clip art of Jeff Bezos repeated. Something about this work that I kind of like. Uh, and just kind of fun and interesting, as whimsical as it is. And again, using the UI in there, which is another kind of, I, I don't want to call it a trend because this has been happening, but it's interesting. We're seeing it a, a lot uh, recently. So that is available for 200 edition of one. Strano with a pretty cool work here. Uh, this is not sure if this is for two, it is for 200 Tezos, uh, edition of 25, so probably for four Tezos or eight Tezos each. Uh, GMGN, I thought quite a brilliant, uh, I've never actually seen GM turn into GN this way. Good morning turning into good night and the light changing, the sun, on, the light coming from the opposite side of the sky. So quite a nice work here by Strano. And here is another one by Strano, just some experimentation. Uh, strange things happening at the studio while playing back FSF18. Uh, maybe a collaboration with Feels and Imposter. Not sure. Maybe it's their collaboration. All to say, I thought it looked pretty cool. Kind of looks like ASCII text here, or pesky text, and a square and some gradients in the background. So just kind of interesting there. Looks like it's projected on a wall too. Nice room. Almost looks like a virtual room. Hard to say. Glitchtown Arcade with a kind of a funny work here. Glitchtown reset. So the missile comes in and then you start getting the glitches here. So there is Glitchtown and the missile comes in and boom, reset, reset, glitch. So kind of a fun work actually from uh, Glitchtown Arcade. That is an addition of one for 200 Tezos here. A nice Nintendo glitch ROM. And here's another one by Igor Kapustin. And this is in collaboration maybe with Ramina. Clown LGI, just an ordinary autumn weekend. Another, another nice illustration here. Just an interesting style. I mean, it's easy to forget like how hard it would be to be original with illustration, uh, but these guys are managing to do it. So here's someone just having a coffee. Again, just kind of a nice, innocent, kind of an easy work uh, to consume, which is nice. And it looks like some leaves maybe in the background. Just an ordinary autumn weekend, May 30th, 2023. So maybe this is autumn in the Southern Hemisphere. Maybe that is what's going on here. Let's just check. Ukrainian independent illustrator based in Warsaw, Poland. So not sure, but remember we saw the work here where next the great uh, poker works or gambling works here. So great work there. More works by RJ. This is cool. New pixel paintings. So we saw the one from yesterday, which looked like a pastiche 
of a David Hockney with these interesting colors, though, this yellow and green. And so here are other works. I'm not sure if these are Hockney as well. They kind of have a Hockney feel to them, don't they? Interesting light and just very moody, what feel like psychological works here. And just sitting in a chair with the laptop in silence. So very kind of poetic works here by RJ. I love those, you know, it's really nice when you get great static works are a wonderful thing. They have a magic of their own. Look at how heavy that shadow is in here too, which again creates a deep sense of, I guess, you know, Dali is kind of well known for his very long shadows in the, with whatever objects are in there. And that, that's and kind of as a De Curico also did that. So it kind of gives a, again, a, a sense of a psychological aura to the whole work. And you can see it here. So beautiful works by RJ. Here's an interesting work by Gloomtube, an edition of 20, Touching Grass, but why? And so, of course, touching grass is what a lot of people will say to themselves, say to others on Twitter uh, or elsewhere. If you're spending too much time in the online world, go outside and touch some grass. Well, Gloomtube is going to do that, but there's hardly any grass left. And everything else has been, has human intervention in it, whether it's these little, you know, plans for some sort of construction here whether it's the new development that's coming soon here for rent. I mean, it's a really a portrait. It is a portrait of our world here. Some street lights, some radio TV tower of sorts, communication cell tower with a factory letting out smog in the distance and a little bit of clouds that are just kind of vaporizing. And the blue is not blue. It's almost like this gray violet you know, and you can hardly see the factory because of all the pollution, perhaps. So kind of a, you know, another kind of scathing commentary, really, by Gloomtube uh, of our dystopian world. <laughs> Rosatio, the ecosystem. So look at this. So we're talking, we have Rosatio here uh, in the comments yesterday saying he was going to use some more uh, iconography and kind of using it. And I love this, the good sportedness of Rosatio in today's comments. You know, I love, you know, I love it. One of the great things is to not take things personally. And yeah, and, and so I just think it's awesome. It's like, yeah, no, I'm just happy to get feedback and love just getting feedback. And a lot of us are that way. And I think that's just such a healthy, great, uh, you know, way of being. And here's just like, look at this. So, so I don't know if he's switching things up here. But it looks great. It looks really, it's different, hey? Because, and why does it feel different? Because recently, maybe it was the Monster series, we had a lot of this kind of center composition. You know who uses a lot of centering in the composition? I mean, remarkably so, is William Blake, is what I've noticed. Blake uses a ton of centering. So we were seeing that in Rosatio with the Monster series. So here, this feels different. It feels like we have maybe a few more elements, like maybe this, what looks like bamboo here, maybe a kind of old like dinosaur skull of some kind, perhaps, and everything. So it looks like things are being changed up here. Who knows? This was probably made before we were discussing it, but all to say, and look at this. We were discussing this yesterday, kind of Rosatio's kind of whimsical use of collage, because here, remember, it was like a banana with the other work of the animal was being used for the legs. Now we're using part of the jaw of this animal here. So I think that's really cool. Changing the color a little bit and interesting use of GIF here as well. Very interesting use of GIF where flashing with like the collage and some sort of maybe digital painting. Very interesting. We see it with the egg too. So really nice work. The ecosystem, very cool title, edition of 20. And look at this. I love this piece. It's called Rex by X Mortal. So another Boston Dynamics dog. This is a really nice one. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what my favorite part is. This is my sort of eccentric side to myself is this white, this kind of unfilled white here. There's something just, and just how it drags off 
in the middle here. I also really like the lines on the top and the bottom. And of course, the subject matter is inherently interesting. This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful glitch here. And it's just a really, what I want to call successful piece. Edition of eight, sold only for five Tezos each. Hans loves it. Hans picked up a few. Kurt Hustle Collective was first on the scene there, picking it up immediately. Great score. Cool title too, Rex, which of course is Latin for king, but maybe it's also referencing the name of a dog, Rex the dog. Uh, Flux by Tugcan, so another cool kind of glitch video work here. At auction for 10, edition of one, so a one of one. So just kind of a really richly textured glitch work here, courtesy of, is it Tugcan, I think, Tugcan. So very cool work here, just minted today, I believe. And look at this House of the Model work. So there's a bit of music here. So I have a little snippet. Let me just turn this up. So you know what it reminds me of? I love House of the Models music, by the way. I'll t it reminds me of New Order, Power, Corruption, and Lies, or maybe even Brotherhood, those early New Order albums. Very nice work here. So very cool work from House of the Model. Very nice work. I saw on House of the Model's Instagram, uh, DJs in uh, Los Angeles on a radio station there, on FM radio station. So that is very cool. This is an edition of 20 for 10 Tezos. And, as, and so this is also for the 200 Tezos event. So as ever, uh, looking forward to that, you know, party in the sky that we'll have where House of the Model should be in charge of music, I think, with maybe a little intro by or outro, maybe the chill part, the earlier and later in the night, uh, by Ed Marola or something. Just fun to think about. Anyways, here's a couple of works by Sabato, who again is going to be on tomorrow on the Twitter spaces. And so just some really cool glitch work uh, from Sabato. And I believe these are earlier works here. So Lilac Fields, beautiful title, 2020 and 2023. These ones are a little bigger than the previous ones. 4K footage captured on a OnePlus 7 Pro phone, H.264 codec data bending glitches baked with Adobe, Adobe Media Encoder. Only 29 Tezos here. Is that, that's on secondary. So what did this sell for? So this sold out right away. You know, these uh, glitch works by Sabato didn't used to sell uh, so quickly, but now they are almost ever since that uh, Sotheby's glitch show I think, you know, all of a sudden the market is starting to, for lack of a better term, wise up to, you know, and go, oh, okay, this stuff could be worth actually a lot of money at some point. Not a crazy thought. This is still available on primary here, four left at 888. It's interesting how much more popular Lilac Fields was. It's a beautiful title. Unsaved Paradise. Uh, so this is also, how many are left here? Four left at 888. So get it while you can. Another beautiful glitch here, interesting glitch by Sabato. Fragile Compositions 2020 and 2023, same uh, uh, size and same tech. So you could almost want to get both. Here's a cool work by Walk, another digital work, and this is called Snakes. So it almost looks like someone here at auction for a Tezo, so one of one. And it almost looks like someone, maybe a snake charmer or someone playing with snakes on a street here. So it's always hard to tell with these kind of noisy works by Walk, but a cool one uh, as ever by Walk. Huge fan of his spray painting work. And there is now a bid for two Tezos on this. So cool work by Walk. Human Boy. Long overdue to put some human boy in here. Unseeing, cool title as we go into AI here, made with mid journey, edited in GIMP. So, this is an interesting combination. So, starting with an AI piece in mid journey and then processing it, and here we go, we have a completely different looking work here. And this is also for the uh, 200 Tezos event, an addition of 200 for one Tezos each. There are 193 left. 
So go support Human Boy out there, who's a big supporter of this show, which I totally appreciate. Uh, leaves a ton of comments and everything. So much appreciated. Shout out to Human Boy. Uh, Kika Nicolela, that, that awkward feeling. So here's a cool AI work by Kika Nicolela. Kind of a surreal work where the hand almost turns into a kind of octopus-like thing of sorts or, you know, slithering hand here, just kind of a sci-fi feeling as the older guy looks on here on what's happening. So just kind of an interesting uh, uh, composition. That awkward feeling, the oldest known octopus fossil is about 296 million years old. They have three hearts, blue blood, and can regenerate cut limbs. Two-thirds of an octopus's neurons reside in its arms. After ma mating, males wander off to die. Yeah, they are quite... What are they? I think they're called the cephalopods. Terence McKenna was a huge fan of, if, if I remember right, the cephalopods, they're th thought to be incredibly uh, smart as well. And they communicate with light, which is why uh, Terence McKenna was such a huge fan of, fan of that. So ever interesting here, addition of 100 for the 200 Tezos event at two Tezos each. Nice piece. Cool subject. Mikey Wilson, Stay Gold Blues. And here continuing what I want to call the Robert Johnson theme, but really we don't know that. Uh, and so the blues player here with the guitar in different settings, now in the desert here. So an AI artwork by Mikey Wilson using Mid Journey. This is for the 200 Tezos event and available for two Tezos edition of 100. There are only 22 left. That is incredible. Look at how popular Mikey Wilson is. So good for him. I mean, he's got 22 here, but still, I mean, he's sold 78. Uh, that is incredible. Very impressive, or maybe 58, but whatever the case is, 56, that is a nice sell on, uh, on this work here. So big, I mean, Mikey Wilson, let me just take this moment to give a massive shout out to Mikey Wilson, who is often for so many people, the first person that buys your work when you put it up, uh, just an unflagging supporter of this community here, a pillar of this community uh, from my perspective, uh, just a wonderful person here, Mikey Wilson. So it's great to see him making art and having success with that. That makes me happy. Somehow I left my email up there, so don't look at that. Uh, nothing too important there. That is the backup email account. Uh, Tooks. So Reverie Snow. So a cool AI artwork here. Let's see if this is loading. This looks a little fuzzy here. We may need to reload it back up. Unless it's low resolution. Someone was telling me, and thank you for the comment. If you want to get the full screen, you hit I... Okay, that was a low resolution vert. So if you want to hit uh, full screen on uh, Super Rare, you hit the I IPFS uh, link and then you'll get the full thing. So cool work by Tooks. It's at a reserve for half an ETH. Cool experimentation as ever. Uh, really original AI artwork. I mean, really pushing it out there. So cool work by Tooks on Super Rare. Here's a work by Martin Joe, kinky crime scene after the party in Mistress Legs' den. So risque description there perhaps. And here we see a couple of kinky bears from the top perspective looking down and maybe almost not exactly sure what that is. Almost like claws coming up through the bottom. So we're either at, I guess we're from above looking below so interesting work, and here you see all the chords and everything. So continuing to be fun and interesting. Martin Joe out of Argentina for the 200 Tezos event. There are 99 left, and I think I just picked up one. So there are 98 left at two Tezos apiece. And also, you can recognize who this is, Die With The Most Likes. Uh, this The painting is awesome that Die With The Most Likes is doing. It's really going somewhere here. And you see the black on the black and just everything. He's really managing to translate his style that I think he created a lot of it digitally. It's really starting to go somewhere physically here as a different kind of product, which is super interesting. So doing really nice work. And here's another piece with flies on meat. Kind of, I'm not sure if this is a work in progress. 
uh, but you can kind of see the colors of the meat here and then some flies on it. So very prolific artist, I might add. So big shout out to Die With The Most Likes. And that is your show, everyone. Thank you again. And hope to see you tomorrow on the Twitter spaces with Sabato. That should be great. <laughs> <laughs>